Yes. Okay, so we're just going to start off as per usual, just shaking the hands, flicking the wrists. Turn that all the way around there. a little bit more. There we go. And put the elbows into it. And the shoulders. Okay, we're going to flex the knees, let the arms swing backwards and forwards. One arm forward, one arm back, turning the waist. I'm going to turn the waist, letting the arms swing round. So it's the momentum of the waist. That's making the arms swing. The more you flip your waist around, the more the swing will occur. Okay, we're going to sit back and bring the toes up while still swinging. Okay, put one foot in front, making sure your feet are hip width apart. Both feet are going to stay flat on the floor. You're going to take your knee forward, but no further than your toes. And again, it's the momentum of the waist and the body that's moving makes the arms move backwards and forwards. You're keeping your head up. Okay, we're going to change legs again, making sure they're hip width apart, but you're not lying in alignment. Push the knee forward, push the brake on at the front, push off the front foot onto the back foot, and vice versa. Okay. okay, we're going to put the hands out in front, circle the wrists outwardly. And then inwardly. And likewise with the shoulders, rotate, circle them around towards the midline of the body. And then outwardly, moving the shoulder blades toward each other. Okay, maybe gently take the head from side to side to warm up a little bit. Ear to shoulder, either side.
Drop the chin and we're going to take the head all the way around in a circle. We do about three times one way. And three times the other way. So change direction. And back to the center. And take a deep breath in, bring the shoulders up to the ears. Hold your breath. And breathe out the go. Two more times, breathing in. And breathe out the go. Last one. Take a wider stance, we're going to circle the waist. And change direction. Big movements, keeping the head in the center. Okay, you're going to turn one foot out. If you need to hold on to something, you're going to be taking one foot off the floor. So if you need to hold onto something, find a wall or a chair, something that's safe, you're going to open up the hip joint outwardly. So you don't need to bring your foot far off the floor. Just make that movement toward the, away from the midline, everybody. And then inwardly, so about three times. Okay, you're going to turn the other foot slightly outwardly so you can put your weight through it. So you don't need to take it vastly off the floor. Outward rotation. And inward rotation. Okay, so three times each side, you can spin and out. Pop the feet together. Hand above the knee, push back. So you should feel a stretch behind the back of the legs. You're going to bend your knees and push back. So it's a time for knee problems at the moment. It's the uh, spring on its way. You can usually get cranky knees. So doing these joint exercises is a good way of uh, helping them to not get too bad. Okay, so you're going to keep your knees together and take them to one side, outwardly. Rotating to this one side, three times, and then we're going to go the other side the same. Okay. So we're going to turn the foot, rotate the ankle. Inwardly. And outwardly. And give it a shake. It's good practice for standing on one leg. Inwardly or outwardly, it doesn't make any difference. About three times and then change the direction. And give it a shake. Okay, so we're going to interlock the fingers, push the palms to the ceiling. Maybe lean to your left. Back to centre and your right. And then back to centre, push the hands out in front of you. I'm going to fold at the waist, push the palms toward the floor. So again, you should feel that stretch on the back of the legs. You're going to hold that for a moment. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, push your palms further toward the floor. And if you can, hold this posture for a moment or two. Let your back open, spine. Take another deep breath in. Breathe out, push toward the floor. Extend a little bit more. Just as, as long as you feel okay doing so, just 70% effort. 
Okay, pop the hands behind the legs, take the nose towards your shins. You're gonna bend the knees, bring the hands up the back of the legs, pop the trousers. As you straighten up, the last thing up is the head. Step out, push the hips forward. Whew. Okay, that's warmed me up a bit. Hopefully it has warmed you up too. So, okay, so we're gonna have a look again at the ball exercises that we were doing. So you're gonna check your posture, head suspended by a piece of string, pop your hands in front of you, hands opposite each other. If you have a ball, then use one. I have a ball, I'll show you. Here we go. So you need to keep your hands opposite each other. I'm going to bring it in and take it out. So from the side, you do this just with your hands opposite each other, it's fine. So the weight's coming forward. So you'll find the board of the foot is the weight is on. You take yourself back, it goes onto the back, onto the heel. Forward. So you can reverse that movement. So what this exercise is doing is allowing you to feel the difference in weight change from the front of the foot to the back of the foot. Then we're gonna make a, a, a horizontal circle. We're going round, turn the waist to the left corner and then to the right corner. So I'll do this from the front. So you're making a circle. So my choir is closed, my choir is open, my navel is pointing to the corner. And the other way, vice versa. Opposite thing happens. So you can play, play with this uh, idea and it will help your Tai Chi help you to move your waist, feel the choir, feel the weight changes. So. Uh, Spend a little more time of it doing it on your own. Just with your hands opposite each other. That's fine. So coming in to the corner, you can turn all the way around. And you can do big circles, little circles. Just have a play. What it makes you do is to move your waist. Okay, moves these uh, opens and closes the coir, which is what is required. So last week we looked at Fair Lady Weaves of Shuttles. So just do a quick recap of that. Okay. So I ended up in Golden Rooster, the heel went down, the back of my knee is against the front heel foot, which is the left one, front, front to knee. Hold the ball, turn to the corner, hand and foot, change the palm as you turn, as you, as you uh, put your weight forward, hold the ball, and the foot, push. And then did a little step up. Needle at sea bottom. So we go over uh, the needle at sea bottom and the um, band through the back. So we'll just do that uh, once more. So this is my left hand, left knee. Heel down, turn the toes out, hold the ball. Turn the waist to the right, step out with the right heel to the right corner. So this will be 12 o'clock, this will be one o'clock. Adjust the foot, hold the ball, turn the waist to 11 o'clock. Hand and foot, push. So then do half a step up, this toe comes up. I'm going to turn my waist and put my right foot back on the floor. Turn my waist and I'll make that circle choo choo train. Brush in front of me. Push the right fingertips down. We we'll do this forwards. So we've done golden rooster. Hold the ball. Golden rooster to 11 o'clock. 
hand comes forward as you do half a step up. Waist turns as I put my weight into the back foot. Do a choo choo train. The right hand comes to the ear. Adjust the foot. One more time. Let's do this together. My left knee is up. Heel goes down, but turns slightly away from the midline. So my back knee is touching my left, my forward foot. I'm going to turn, hand and foot, push to one o'clock, adjust the toes, hold the board, push to 11 o'clock. Push the hand forward as you do half a step up. Turn the waist as you put the weight in the back foot. Hand come to the ear, brush in front of you. And as your hand reaches the final point, the toe goes down. So, okay, so I'm going to go from here, needle at C bottom. So there's a slight bend, so we do in the choir here. So what I'm not doing is sticking my bottom out. I'm sitting into my right leg and slightly bending forward, but from here, not from my waist, from the choir. So I'm going to rise up. So it's like one of those um, birds that, uh, the glass bird, glass would be feeding. We've all seen those birds that just go forwards as if they're pecking. Glass, glasses. It's one of those. So from here, I'm going to straighten up. My left hand's coming to my right uh, elbow. I'm going to step out with my left foot. And I'm going to push. The left hand and the elbow sort of behind a bit from the other angle. So we've done snake creeps down, hand and foot, push with the left hand, elbow behind. So this is opening your back out, fan through the back. Okay. So I'm going to do this to the side so that you can uh, catch me a little bit better. Left hand, left knee, we'll do this together. Heel down, turn the foot out, hold the ball. Back foot is stepped up. Turn the waist to the right, hand and foot. Turn the palm, put the weight into the front leg, push. Adjust the foot slightly so it's facing forward, T-step, hold the board. So the waist to the left corner, so 11 o'clock, hand and foot, so you put the weight through the front foot, push and turn the hand. Back a little bit. Step up, half a step, right foot, push the right hand forwards. You're gonna put the weight into the back foot, gonna turn your waist to the right. Right hand is coming to your ear, and you're going to brush in front with the left hand. The right hand comes from the ear, the fingertips go down toward the floor, adjust the toes. Straighten up, and goes to the right uh, elbow. The left foot goes out, transfer the weight forward, push with the left hand, elbow behind. I'll do it the other way so you can see what's happening. This is a quite a wide, wide movement. The idea is you're elbowing behind. Pushing someone in front, elbow behind. It's a high elbow, okay? So once more. Straighten up, hand and foot. Push. 
So you end up, you're not square, your belly is not facing 12 o'clock, it's facing one o'clock. Okay, so if you're wanting it to, it to be, it's not, it doesn't end up with your belly button facing there, because you've pushed that arm behind slightly, you're turning your waist to put a bit of momentum into that back arm. Okay, let's go here. So, So this is your left knee up, heel down, change the, adjust the foot, hold the ball, turn the waist to the right, so one o'clock, hand and foot, turn and push. Take the weight back, adjust the toes to 12 o'clock, hold the ball, turn the waist to 11 o'clock, hand and foot, Turn the palm and push. Step up, half a step up. Turn the waist as you put the weight into the back foot. Hand comes to the ear in a brush in front of you. Hand comes down, fingertips pointing to the floor. Adjust the toes. Straighten up. Left hand comes to the right elbow inside. Step out with a heel. As you transfer the weight forward, push the palm and elbow behind. I'll do it that way. Do this with me. So left knee is up. Hold the ball. Step to the we we'll still be doing it around the same way, one o'clock. Push. Put the weight back. Hold the ball. Turn the waist to 11 o'clock. Hand and foot. Turn the palm. Push. Half a step up. Turn the waist, put the weight into the back leg. And come to the ear. Brush, needle at sea bottom. So straighten up, left hand comes to the right inside of the elbow, step out with the heel, push forward and elbow behind. Phew, how's that going? Hopefully it's okay. Uh, we'll do a few more of those, because it's a nice section to be able to repeat. And obviously, the more you repeat it, the better you'll be. So we're going to go over that a few times. Um, and I'll try and do it from all angles so you can get the best uh, idea of what's going on. So I'll do one forward, hopefully. So left knee is up, golden rooster. Heel goes down, turn the foot. Turn the waist. Turn. Hand and foot. Push to one o'clock. Take the weight back. All the weight's now on my right foot. Turn the waist. Hand and foot to eleven o'clock. Push the right hand forward. Half a step up, so I'm on my toes. Turn the waist. Left hand comes across to the right shoulder, the right hand comes to my, your right ear. And a brush with the front hand. Right fingertips are going to head to the floor. Adjust the toes. So you're on tiptoe. Straighten up. Left hand is by the inside of the right hand, uh, right elbow. Heel out. Put the weight forward. Push forward and elbow behind. Left knee up, it goes down, turn the foot. Then I put my weight into the front foot and my back foot will come off the floor slightly. My right knee is behind the left knee. Turn the waist to the right, hand and foot. Change the weight to forward, push. 
Okay, adjust the foot, hold the ball. Turn to the left side, left corner, 11 o'clock, hand and foot. Push. Half a step up, turn the waist. Hand comes to the ear, brush, and fingertips go down. Straighten up, heel down, push an elbow. Oh, have a rest a moment. So that could be quite um, challenging. And uh, that's nothing new, is it? <laughs> okay. So we end up we're done. Needle at sea bottom. Fan through the back. From here, we need to turn all the way round and face six o'clock. So this will be twelve o'clock. That will be six o'clock. Okay. So I'm going to take my weight back a bit, take my weight back. I'm going to turn my toes toward three o'clock. And we'll just do that together. Take the toes back. Turn. Do I need to T-step? Okay. We're just doing the feet at the moment. Toes come up, turn, T step. So from here, take the weight back, turn the foot, step into T step. Okay, so the next movement is Banyan Choi, deflect, parry, and punch. And we'll attempt to do that, but we'll have to review it again next week. So we'll try and do that today. So deflect, parry and punch. Starts with your left hand at the top of your head. The right hand is a fist by your rib cage. Blocking with this hand. The right hand is coming through, punching on the nose. Okay. Very kindly this is, yeah. <laughs> so go from T-step, left hand is above palm facing the ceiling, right hand is by your rib cage in a fist. So when I say a fist, what do I mean? What I mean is the thumb is on the outside, tiger's, tiger's eye, tiger's mouth, whatever you want to call it, is at the top there. That means this bit here. Palm is going to come, knuckles are going to go toward the back of me as I turn them round. To the hands. So these knuckles are aiming for the nose, not your nose, somebody else's. So if someone's coming to punch you, getting the hand out of the way, punching them on the nose. So the left hand remains high. The right fist is going to come through that gap. You see here. So the left hand is coming down, the right hand and the pass pass over each other. So do this a few times. It's only once in the actual form. That's down, punch. The waist turns. Left hand high, left hand starts dropping as the right hand goes on the inside. Okay, it's always good to do things to both sides. So I'm gonna turn over and do it the other side. So my right hand is now high, my left hand is coming through.
but if you have time if, if you have time it's best to always try and practice things on both sides because then you get to more equalized and um, so that things are more balanced um, so it's a good thing to do so i'm just going to show you where we've gotten to how we got there so we did we do through the little little at sea bottom and through the back I need to T step. So, okay, comes on inside. Put me back a bit more. So, we go from here. So, this is my right hand. Step forward. There, lady, we need to shuffle. Take your foot up, turn it to the screen, step in. This is my left hand, this is my right hand. So the trick is, as I step out, my hand is going to punch. The back of the hand, the knuckles only that are making contact. Uh, so this will be one, this will be two. So as my hand comes out, my foot comes out. So the foot and the hand uh, arrive together. So from this side, hand and foot, hand and foot. So when you're stepping out, you have to make sure that your feet are not aligned. So what you don't want to be doing is stepping here. It's going to make the next movement very dodgy. Very, yeah, very dodgy. So we'll be able to manage it. So left hand is high, right hand is by the rib cage. I'm going to turn slightly. Heel down. Heel down. Heel down. Okay, so the next bit is a uh, is challenging also. But basically, I've done my nose punch, my nose, back of the nose, top, top there. I'm going to turn my wrist. It goes all the way so that my knuckles are facing the midline of the body. We're going to make a half circle. It's going to come to my waist. So from here, Turn the palm so the knuckles are facing inwards. So what I've done is from here, turn. It's going to make a circular movement to the waist. As it gets to the waist, it turns so the eye of the mouth of the tiger is facing upwards. Thumbs are on the outside because if you punch with your thumb on the inside, you'll not do yourself any favours, you'll injure yourself. So the next movement will be a punch with this hand. It's a bit like a saw, sawing motion. Okay. So this will be one, two. Um, Foot. This foot, the lower foot, the right foot is going to turn outwards as you turn your hand. So this occurs at the same time. Put the side up. I'm breaking this down as much as possible, then we need, we'll have to we'll put it all together next week because we won't be much time today. But I'm just going to demonstrate the entire movement for you. Hand and foot. Always something happening with the hand and the foot. Arm turns, 
the foot turns. I transfer the weight. Right hand's going to circle round onto the waist. Okay. And the foot. So my right foot is turning to the outer side of me. So away from the midline, the toes are going. As I put my weight down, I'm going to bring my hand round in a circle to my waist. So I'll demonstrate the whole thing going this way, and then we'll cover over again next week. Reflect, parry, and punch. One, two, three. Time is running on. So we'll just review what we've done today, what we've looked at. So we went from left knee up, go down, hold the ball, turn to one o'clock. Push. Hold the ball, turn to 11 o'clock. Push. Push the right hand forward, circle it round. Needle at sea bottom. Come up. Bare lady moves the shuffle. Take the weight back, turn the foot face forward. Effect. The important things are to make sure that the heel, the hand and the foot, the thing is coordinated, which is a difficult thing to get. So I suggest you do 10 of these, or five of these, perhaps wait, wait for the kettle to boil. The T-step, and from the inside, onto the nose. Okay, and we'll review a little bit more next time. We're going to do a little bit of uh, relaxation. So ladies put the right hand on their bellies, gents put the left, other hand on the top. You're gonna take a deep breath in and inflate your belly. So you want your hands to be rising as you breathe in. And falling as you breathe out. So if you can't manage that, start with your hands at the top of the chest and breathe into that area. And then bring it down in stages. So you come to just the solar plexus, just below your rib cage there. and then just below your belly button. So breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. We take three deep breaths by bringing the hands up. So breathing in, your hands up. Turn the palms towards you as you breathe out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay. Shake the little leg. And let's shake with the other leg. Both hands. Okay. 
there. It's the end of today's lesson, so we'll move this 